Everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Maddie. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm doing well. And for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Okay, so my name is Matti Pakkanen. I'm from Finland. So it's December. It's very dark here. So dark mode is definitely on. Uh, I'm a fourth year. Microsoft MVP, Microsoft 365 Apps and Services, working as a modern workplace lead. I guess my title a little bit changed on a small company called Tahto Group in Finland, working with small and medium-sized enterprises and non-profit organizations. So doing a lot of things around Microsoft 365, helping customers to migrate to the product, use the product, improve, creating intranets, Doing a lot of stuff around Microsoft 365, security, device management, whatever is there. What do you what do you see with your deployments? I'm always interested to know since we work in this in you know similar space. Um, you know what? Where do you see the biggest gaps with with customers you're talking to? Where do they like? Is it do they have trouble with adoption? Or they have trouble with governance, compliance, and security? I mean, where where do you see like the greatest need is or the most asks for help uh, yeah i would say the security and compliance side is one of they are missing and we are in finland kind of a you know northern europe and everybody thinks that we are in this kind of a safe place we're not so there's a lot of things happening around security space but they still need someone to translate whatever is happening what is new how should i do this how should i manage my devices how should i manage my data and those kind of things. And then the adoption side, of course, as well. Still, we have been seeing teams over five years or over six years now already. Like six years now. It's, yeah. And I think right? still yeah. a lot of users don't know how to use Teams, for example. Yeah. And they still struggle. I have Teams, but I have SharePoint. I have OneDrive. So they don't really know what to use when. Yeah. And right, trying to clarify that with customers as well. Yeah, I've seen that uh, some Microsoft senior leaders there, they even expressed that their frustration was like, why is that question still out there? The which tool to use when? I'm like, you know, and then after this, it was kind of a banner year for Microsoft creating new logos for products, like all these different things, all the co-pilots, all the Viva stuff, like all of that out there, which kind of increased the number of times I hear the, well, which tool am I supposed to use when for each of those? But yeah, yeah exactly. But that's an opportunity for the MVPs to write about, talk about. So what kind of stuff? Like, what are your topics? What are you writing about? What are you speaking on right now? Uh, well, I, of course, Teams is one of my interests. All, all the collaboration tools. I have been working with collaboration tools 15 years, maybe. SharePoint started on 2003, actually was the first version. Also writing a book about SharePoint currently. Oh, wow. Hopefully getting it done on January. Not making any promises, but let's put it out there. So I always say about writing books, it's the most work you could do for the least amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big effort. So I yeah uh, yeah probably yeah I respect you for 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 venturing down that path. Yeah, it was more of a learning experience. So learning to write more technical English, and because it's my not my native language, so what a learning experience what yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no no that's that's great so uh are, who's your publisher who are you doing that through uh packed okay excellent so yeah. we'll watch for that for sure yeah i guess it's out there already but not making any promises on the launch date but yeah. the book is not out yet yeah yeah well, I'm, I'm, sure they're doing, I'm sure they're doing some promotion out there of that so yeah well, excellent. Well, what? So let's talk about let, your your journey to becoming an MVP. Like, what what was that like? How did you find out about the program? How did you get involved? Yeah, I had a couple of Finnish Finnish friends and uh, the Finnish community, a couple of people there, and and then I I had a good mentor. So Vesku was my mentor actually, and kicking me in the butt. We work at work at the same company, so. So I get good mentoring about how, how to become an MVP and started writing blogs, started 
kind of speaking at the events and also started hosting the Finnish teams community. We are having a five year celebration on April. So we yeah. have been actually having quite good community inside Finland around around teams. That's great. Not so many speakers. I think we have the same familiar faces already all all the time speaking, but but still. Well, that's why I always I tell people that are interested in, you know, going down that path and maybe, you know, working on becoming an MVP is like one of the easiest things to do to get speaking, uh, you know, experience is reaching out to various user groups and saying, Hey, I'm, I'd love to speak on these topics. And if you get picked up, it's relatively yeah. easy to do in the virtual world. Yeah. Nowadays it's so, so simple. And there's a lot of those user groups and I, I guess all the user groups are missing new speakers all the familiar faces are actually there all the time. So, yeah. So that's kind of a problem when, when on the user groups, but yeah, there is a lot of opportunities just, just to look for and look at and follow the community. So, well, having gone through and helped, yeah, this is another great uh, topic uh, is you know, starting a user group. What advice do you have for people that, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, Look, there's a lot of virtual user groups you can go and join that are regional or, uh, you know, around the world. I mean, I, I've got friends that are down in South Africa. Occasionally, I'll join a user group down there, um, you know, their end of day, my start of my day. Um, but if you don't have a group meeting uh, in person locally, um, what, what's your advice for starting up? What, what should people keep in mind if they're looking to start up a user group? Uh, it oh yeah, that's a tough one because we actually started. We had the first local event. We have food and everything gathering, opportunity to sauna and everything. So we had a lot of happening around that, and got a lot of people there. And but I guess it was the teams were so new, so brand new, and everybody said, "Hey, hey, we should go to teams." So it was a lot of interest around that, and of course bringing in customers and try to get them to speak and and join in. So, but any good tips? No, just, just <laughs> maybe just trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. And see, does it fly or not or not? Yeah. So, and maybe we actually had a SharePoint community in Finland. It had been, I guess, Jussi Roina started that, that community. Yeah. I've actually, I, I ages came over ago. And I presented to the user group in Helsinki years ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, traveled over, did a number of events and swung by and, and then we had a share pint afterwards. There's a pub yeah. just kind of down around the corner from where the user group met. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that was the one that UC started. Yeah. And we actually started as a side group there. So, so, so already had some, some kind of a base, base of, base of community users there. So, yeah. Well, that, that is, that's another way to start a user group. Like if, it, like here it, where I live and we have our, what used to be the SharePoint user group and it's kind of morphed and changed. And there's other smaller user groups. There's other constituencies. There was for a while, like an AI focused user group. Um, I don't know that they've done anything in the last year or so, um, but there's a dynamics group that's pretty healthy. And um, you know, there's a, like there's a SQL Saturday event that's scheduled for early this next year. And, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, but you can always go and build off of an existing, if you have a, if there's yeah. an impetus, if there's enough interest to go and create something, but yeah, I, I always tell people, it's like, look, e even if you don't get masses showing up, if there's four or five people sitting around sharing experiences, you're going to get value out of that. Yeah. Sharing sometimes pains, painful stories, um, yeah, true. as well as your wins. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just that we are going to have kind of have a monthly event, of course, not in the summertime or during the Christmas time, but still figuring out the new fresh content if you have don't have new speakers. So that that needs some effort. Yeah. But of course, Microsoft is publishing a lot of stuff which you can talk about. And of course, you can always take Copilot and do that. Of course. <laughs> and, and as much as we're all like, I don't know, getting a little burned out on, you know, generic Copilot, like, People are asking questions. People are interested in the in the topic. So, yeah. Some sometimes it's you know, like pull your audience, and if you know, even if you're seeing repeats of a topic, if pe that's what people want to hear about, 
give the people what they want. Yeah. Actually, the last session was pretty good. We got a couple of tips and tricks around teams from the audience. So that was good. Yeah. Of course, those familiar faces were speaking before, but still someone from the audience as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Well, that's getting the audience interaction is always the best thing. It's, as a presenter, it's one of the worst things when nobody's asking questions, nobody's providing feedback, nobody's sharing yeah. stories. Nobody, nobody yeah, wants to present true. to a wall. You know, you want, you want yeah. interaction. Yeah, and that's kind of a bad thing about those virtual events that you cannot actually see who is there, and people are so shy opening cameras and everything. So yeah. And and just presenting using is there someone actually listening other than maybe the host? <laughs> yeah, well that's why so. like our in in person we're doing our collab days Utah event uh, in April and it uh, it's in person only we're not doing the virtual like this will be we did the virtual the last two times and we're like no nope, we're gonna do we're gonna focus on the people that are in the room. Yeah, yeah we have been doing some hybrids but it's still kind of a pain that you need to take care of the kind of a, the hybrid version as well and see who yeah. is on the line and and that needs some effort yeah. and of course it's it needs some more practicality so it's yeah. not just opening a laptop and, and shooting it so no it, it, in fact for the uh the for some people that know there's the the european um, cloud collaboration summit um ecs yeah. and there's the north american collaboration and cloud summit um nax um, which is moving from Branson, Missouri to Dallas this next year. And so I've helped run the hybrid portion. So organizing volunteers, because where it worked for hybrid is where you have a dedicated person that's in the virtual room and making sure that it's good to have somebody that's managing that, but is there physically. So if there's a question online, they can represent, ask the question yeah. to the speaker, that kind of thing. That's where it works the best. I, but we've, I believe we've decided for this, this year to not do virtual, do virtual, to do in-person only. So, yeah, I think you're going to start to see a shift in events back to in-person yeah. only. Like it's fine yeah, to have already. a keynote, like stream a, a keynote, but for the sessions, my preference is in-person. Yeah. Already seeing that a lot because, because nowadays there isn't so many options for virtual, virtual events. Yeah. To attend as a speaker. So, yeah. Well, hey, my last question for you with all the announcements and things that are out there, like, what are you most excited about? What, what, what announcement has Microsoft made that you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm on that. I'm going to be keeping up with that. Should I say something else? Besides else and co -pilot? Co -pilot? <laughs> yeah. Is there another answer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, have been, have been testing it for, for a couple of weeks and, and, impressive but then you need to have you need to prepare everything should be prepared your data should be good and and permissions everything so preparation work is really important uh, i see a lot of lot of for example on my customers there's a lot of outdated unnecessary data available for the co-pilot to crunch on and getting bad answers <laughs> isn't that funny We've been saying that for years about search and it's yeah. still true. It's even more so than for Copilot. Yeah. Archiving. That's something. Discussions with every customer. No one is archiving. R really archiving, doing the things. Of, co of course, in Finland, Lazy Station, and then you have a real archiving and separate system for kind of a, having kind of a set metadata and everything, but it's not so heavily in use in, for example, in small and medium sized enterprises. So and for, for folks that haven't been paying attention to Microsoft made investments in archiving, um, yeah. and backup and archiving, uh, it, it, that they finally recognize that, you know, Hey, this is essential. There's a number of the big, um, consulting companies and, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, you have like Gartner and Forrester that have been recommending having third party, back up in addition to what's out of the box um but uh, having more granular control over your backup and archival but microsoft finally went and invested in that space for native solutions as well as third-party investments that's an indicator folks that you need to be yeah looking at your archiving 
Yeah, the archiving solution already looks quite good. I actually tested it and, and well, still probably deleting something is also good that you don't need to have that data, but, but people like to spare everything over 15 years or something. Right. Well, it's the, it, cause if you delete something and that, and then, uh, you know, find, Hey, that had a usefulness and I've already taken steps. Well, that's why having a process for the archival, um, yeah. in staging it into where, how it's moved, um, is preferable so that you don't just delete things that you might need, but again, stage that content so that you have time to decide, Hey, like if it's, if it's available on tape and I realize I've made a mistake, I can go back to it. Yeah. But yeah. Life cycle, data life cycle, data life cycle from start to finish or, yep. or the recycle bin maybe. Yep. So, well, Maddie, I really appreciate your time getting to know you for folks that want to reach out to you, connect with you. Where are you most active on social? How can people find you? LinkedIn X still trying on blue sky, but it's quite silent, but maybe LinkedIn and X are, are most active. Yeah. Well, awesome. We'll make sure to have all of your social links, of course, in the profile add on the blog add on Buckley planet and add on YouTube. So really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Wow. Wow.